Good morning and uh, welcome to Race Industry Now, the weekly webinar series from EPAR Trade presented to you by ARP, Performance Plus Global Logistics, Peak Feria Racing Component, and Fifth Third Bank Motorsport. I am Francisque Savignan, the founder and CEO of EPAR Trade, the racing industry every minute, every day. This is episode 446. This is a very special one, Judy, right? We are going to be hosting Shaver Specialty Racing Engines. With me this morning are Judy Kim, the co-founder of ePartRed, and we have, uh, for the first time, a little technical challenges with our host, Jeff Hammond, but our producer, Reed Keneski, is working with him directly, so Jeff should be with us any second. So, Judy, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I have been thrilled waiting for weeks having Ron and Don on today. And, um, you know, they are just the magic masters of open wheel engines. So it's a thrill to have them on. They've been dominating for a uh, like few decades now. So I'm excited to have them on. And I know we have a great audience today. Good Hello, morning, gentlemen. gentlemen. Talking about technical issues, you know, you got to remember we're not really that technical here. You know, it's we're, we're getting old, so but, I, but we finally figured out how to do it. Yeah, it's simple. Well, if you don't have Lake Speed by your side. Too. Yeah, Lake, Lake normally does all that stuff. I know. You know? I know. So how you doing, you good, morning. Friends, Dave? good morning. Hi, everybody. So, Don, good morning, sir. Don, you're a master. You have done. You have done many of those uh, uh, videos, so why don't you you get started while we wait for Jeff? And uh, we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we have a limited amount of time, so why don't you get started, Dan? Well, you know, one of the 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 things that we wanted to do was th there's been so much interest in, especially lately, the Ford project. Um, you know, we started this thing what, four or five years ago, something like that. Yeah, four uh, years ago, and. And there's been, during that time, we haven't really been able to, you know, let everybody know exactly what's happening. The, the, the Ford guys that are that are interested in this are, are incredible. I mean, there, there's so many of them. We, we were kind of surprised by all that. And so we've been working, you know, the last four or five years since we've been working on this project, we have, you know, we've been doing incredible amount of testing to be able to get to the point where we can say, hey, guys, you know, th this thing is working out and it it's solid, it's strong. And we we are almost ready to get to the point where we can say, hey, make a phone call and you can order one of these things. Um, so it, that's what that's really what we've been doing. It's 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 amount of it's a matter of doing all the testing that that uh, that's been that, that's been taking the time. And also, too, you know, th this is a it's a brand new project. So you know, Ford had a had some blocks that they that, that that we started basing stuff on, but the cylinder head, for example, that was that it's it's all brand new. It started from scratch. So it because of that, we have done again the the amount of testing we've had to do to prove that cylinder head uh, has been tremendous. And during that process, we've made a number of changes in the actual casting of the cylinder head to improve reliability. Um, and we're, we have gotten to the point now where all the changes that we've needed to make have been done. We've given them to the Ford engineers, which have been great, by the way. And, and, and they're at the point now where they're taking these CAD models and going back to the, going back to the, the, the people that are casting these things and, and starting that whole process of, of casting the latest versions of what we've had, what we have. So they, they actually have x-ray capability and all kinds of capabilities we wouldn't have here we we'd have to saw it up the old-fashioned way and yeah. look at it so it's really improved things um they've really been fantastic uh, we had to revamp a little bit of everything i didn't like anything so um but it's pretty good now it's not it's it's actually running every day and and we have a couple of good teams that are starting to run pretty well so um boards should be happy but and we built our first two uh factory engines for briscoe so they're out being tested right now and they're a little different version of what they're we're going to build for donnie shots versus what we're going to give to the public what how long did it take from you know the original project to you know the final engines built 
It's been two years. Yeah. I mean, we've accelerated it a bit, so, you know, because of our experience. But, um, you know, without Ford, we wouldn't be anywhere. And the, um, they've really been a, a big help to us with the, some of their electronics and stuff. And we went back to their factory and used their dynos a little bit because they're a little more sophisticated than ours. And um, so it's been a learning curve for both sides so but they're they're just about there i would say probably at the first of uh, next year they'll have them on sale excellent ron can you take us a little bit you know back from the early days to now you know what what was the journey how did you get to where you how are how far do you want to go back <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning i mean you, you're such a legend you know and again my apologies jeff hammond should <laughs> with us any second so yeah. we're feeding up for jeff and <laughs> you guys are doing a great job yeah <laughs> I, I met jeff probably 40 years ago so yeah we're doing doing the same thing but the the beginning in the beginning i mean the sprint car really hasn't changed a lot but the engines had i mean all we had was an iron block it was usually a 327 or 350 block. And then uh, Brodix made heads for it in 76 out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. And that jumped us up another notch. And then Donovan and I got together and we made a aluminum block. And that jumped us up another notch. And uh, the rest is history. Everybody's making parts for what we have. I mean, that engine started out at 450 horse when I was there. It's <laughs> 950 horse now. So it's the same engine. So we had to keep making it stronger. Um, the, and of course, with that performance gain, they had to change the cars a lot to take the power. And that's basically how we got there from here. The engine, as the engines got more powerful, the cars got better uh, simply because they had to. And uh, it brought us to where we are today, but the cars are exactly pretty all the close to the same, yeah. pretty close to the same, just beefed up here and there. And um, of course, the drivers have got their hands full now with 950 horse. I, you know, they, you know, it spins the wheels at will, so they've got to be pretty good with the throttle. And um, it's, it's 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 you'd have to be there to see it, but you know, if you go to the museums, you can see that. The, the the progression of cars, um, how they've gotten better. But, you know, it's, you know, I, I kind of worked where I played. You know, <laughs> I, I sat on the beach for 20 years and surfed a little bit and went to the bars and stuff. And I thought I got to go to work. <laughs> so that's how that happened. But um, it, uh, yeah, it, it's been an interesting ride. I wouldn't uh, change it for anything. But what did you see in changes in technologies over the years? Because, I mean, you know, it's obviously you're a genius and, and you guys are brilliant at building engines, but the suppliers have come up also with a lot of new innovation, new materials, yeah. et cetera. How, how closely do you work with, with those suppliers huh. and what, what help de take you? It to depends. For instance, Barnes is a place that makes oil pumps and, and they're just down the street and Donovan's just down the street. So we would go over there and give them feedback from the racing and uh, they would develop what we needed. We'd kind of help them in the development, you know, and, and um, most of the factories have been really good. Chessel, uh, Iskadarian, they've all worked with us to make better parts. Um, and they listen to us a little bit and then they make their own version of it. But it's, it's, it would be really interesting to take all these guys to all the factories that we use. And we literally use probably 25 factories and um, all the other builders use them too. Now. I mean, there's, I'm not the only builder anymore. So, you know, Earl Gertie left and then I was the only guy in town for a while, but now there's a lot of talented builders and they're using all our things. So we're getting even better because we're putting using their input as a help too. So it's, you know, we're probably half of the half of the part of development for the factory. So they take what we do and they turn it into what their version of it is. So and 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 they're versatile. The factories are really good people and 
And if you want something a little different, they make it a little different. Or, or we see a part that's weak. We, you know, we're, they we're working with the engineers to, to, to beef up the, the weak spots. And that's worked out well in a lot of things. Crankshafts, rods. I mean, we've done yeah. that in a lot of, with a lot of parts. Yeah. It, it seems it's never ending because the power keeps going. Yeah, it, it, we're, we're constantly so, having to, to, to work on things just because of that fact. When I first started here, I remember, you know, 25 years ago, I remember the first engine that we had here on the dyno that made 800. We were jumping up and down. It was incredible. Well, we're way over that now. And to, to be able to do that, we had to modify some parts so that they wouldn't break to, to be able to do that. Yeah, you can't use the same parts for 950 that you had for... 450 yeah, it's just not, so not everything's kind of gotten a lot better you know i mean you could go on forever with the, the people that have helped but you know and and the, the racers too like carl kenzer and kenny woodruff and some of the old timers they 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 kind of took us under their wing and and they liked us and you know they helped us with stuff he says you need to make this or you need to make that you know and that's what we did. A lot of the innovations came from, you know, from guys that are they're in the Hall of Fame right now that, that, that we, you know, that Ron's been able to, to work with. And, you know, a lot a lot of the ideas, you know, we've got a great team here the the the, the engine builder guys here. You know, we got we got Keith, we got Dan, we got we got Robert that are actually assembling the engines where we all talk about what how can we make this better what what can we do to make it better with all of our experiences you, and you know ron put this team together just just to be able to do that and and we've been we've been very successful in doing it and it's it's really kind of been a, a fun thing to see our own evolution just from hey let's try this and see if it works you know a, a lot of guys don't have the 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 option of doing that for whatever reason you know ron says well yeah if you want to try it let's Let's do it. Sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does. And that's how we've, that's how we've yeah. learned a lot. Of it. So we, you know, we have two dinos. So we, we constantly use the dinos and, and, you know, we've got everybody, even Australia, Australia, they're really big in sprint cars. And, and, you know, they send over stuff that is different than what we do, but some of it really works good. So we never close our eyes. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. It's been a long ride. It's been really good. Thank you. We, we got a, a few questions. So if you have questions, please uh, use the chat button. So we got a, a first question from Deanne Hopings. Without a failure, how do you decide to do a rebuild? Well, that's a good question. I didn't hear it. So the, the amount of time, what? how do we decide how long the interval oh, is between yeah. rebuilds? Yeah, we, we really decided... We use about 10, 10 races as as a as a starting point. But over time, to help her out or him out, uh, the you know, for instance, a connecting rod. We know um <laughs> we know how long a connecting rod works from the metallurgy. So then we calculate that into engine speed. So we know where we're at with that, the, the life. So when that engine comes back in, we know what parts to time out. Um, it's not really as simple as I'm making it, but pistons, for instance, we replace almost every time. Um, rods, cranks probably will go two or three years, um, depending on whose product you use. And all of those things have come from me being in the field and racing them and seeing what breaks and what and doesn't what breaks. Break. Yeah. Seeing what breaks. Yeah. You know, we, we've had so many, I mean, we, we've been doing this long enough. We've seen a lot of broken motors, you know, not just ours, but other folks too. And, and we've been, and because of that, we've been able to say, okay, well, that part should be a little, needs to be a little stronger in this area here and there. And and that's kind of how it's evolved over the years. Yeah. I mean, for instance, a rocker arm <laughs> that they break a lot. So we know an aluminum rocker, We'll go about 20 races. And, and we just know that from experience. But a, a steel rocker, we can actually rebuild those three or four times before we have any problems with them. You know, Jessel and some of these guys, T&D, they do a great job with them. And um, and they've learned all the problems we've had. Like we knew we need, they had needle bearings in the tip. So we didn't want needle bearings in the tip because they crumbled. And we uh, come up with a, you know, DLC coating, they call it. And we DLC coat the axle and the and the 
wheel, wheel. and that works wonderful. We have, we've eliminated something that's going to die. Yeah, the, the doing doing that, the part will la actually last longer. And when it starts to go, it doesn't fail. It just starts to wear out and we can actually see it and, and fix it. Excellent. We got a, another question from our friend John Bigford. Uh, Ron, can you Bigford? talk about the evolution of the fuel injection? The evolution? The evolution of the fuel injection. <laughs> well, it was actually invented by... Uh, Travers uh, was a part of Traco way back in the day, and uh, Stu Hilborn. And believe it or not, the concept that they created is still used to this day. It uses a barrel valve. It's a constant flow system. Um, it has evolved quite a bit, but the injection, the shape of the injector for airflow, we've learned a lot there, so they're different. But the main unit, the barrel valve and the nozzles, and the fuel pumps. Just are, like it started out? Yeah, just like it started out. In fact, the rotor we used was made in 1949. <laughs> and, um, you know, we'll, we'll grind on them and do things. But it's basically, uh, it's it, it's really a unique system because it, you know, the nozzles and the barrel valve control it. And then we use other valves to, you know, we lose a low speed valve and a high speed valve because it's, it's, it, you know, to, to, to lean it out where we want it to watch the fuel curve. But there's really, as John, John was around when we had the early ones and they really haven't changed much. The shapes of them have changed from airflow. But, uh, placement the, of the nozzle. Yeah, the placement of the, the nozzle, nozzle is I, critical. We did a down nozzle deal years ago that picked them up 30 or 40 horsepower. And, um, and then we change the, the way we we feed the fuel. So we squirt it or we spray it, we call. So one's got a screen on it, it sprays, and the other one's just a, a, a just a pointed a piece it's with a, a screen. Just a solid screen. And that really, really picks them up for power, but it doesn't make them drive as good. Um so we've changed it all over the map doing stuff like that, trying to get more power. And but the basic concept is exactly the way it was in 1949. So interesting. We we got another question from Charlie uh, Sykes. Um, going back to the Ford, uh, will these sports be available à la carte from Ford blocks, heads, front covers, etc.? Yes, they will. They're they're all they're all in they're all been manufactured now, and we have a a spot to manufacture them and we're ready to go. We need to finish the block and the heads, but the, the front drives, uh, the fuel injection, um, the cylinder heads, the rocker arm stands, all that stuff is ready to sell and um, we can sell it to you now, but um, we do have them all done. It's, uh, still, We're still suffering from uh, parts shortage. You know, it takes a long time to get some parts for instance, rockers might take 12 weeks. Uh, cranks take six months. <laughs> so, you know, if you're going to order stuff, you need to order way ahead. Um, but, yeah, all that stuff is available. The, the the Ford guys, the Ford engineers, what what they're doing, uh, Engineer Dave and Mike, they're they're actually putting a cookbook together. They're, they're putting a, a, a book that has all the parts listed, um, have specifications for the engine. Um, the it's engine going to be basically a cookbook for so whoever at at some point, whoever is going to want to build these engines can take this cookbook and they can actually put one together. They're not going to have all the secrets that we have, but the Ford will eventually offer that when they get to the point where they can say yes, you can do it, and we have the parts here ready, readily available. To yeah, them. so you can literally go in the ports catalog and then the Ford catalog. And flip to Ford engines, and it's going to be a complete list. Yeah, with this particular all engine. the yeah. every nut and bolt, every, literally every nut and, and bolt, everything you need to make an engine. Yeah. How, how many engines have you built so far? On that one, on the Ford, yeah, we, the of the the Ford engine, the 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 engine, yeah, probably uh, the race version, probably twenty, but uh, we've only built two of the factory engines that we're going to build. And uh, they both worked uh, quite well, but we've only got two of them running and we just got them running. So um, 
that was the first part with all Ford parts. What we did with the factory engine, um, because there's been a lot of questions about this too. You know, everybody's saying, well, it's not going to be the same as Donnie Schatz's motor. Well, it it kind of is. It, it power wise, it kind of is. But what we've done, because we've for all the testing that we've done, we've we've got so many different combinations that we use. We've come up with a, a best all around combination for the Ford customer engine. And that's how we put that motor together. It's the best all around for, they can go to multiple tracks and the engine will work fine. It will work decent at, at, at all tracks, including the big ones. Horsepower wise, we, we didn't sacrifice anything there for the customer engines. You know, we've done some cost saving stuff like that, but um, it, we, we've tried to tailor the customer engine so that it, it, it's kind of the best of both worlds sort of thing. Yeah, so we didn't let them have all the, the little secrets that we've learned about it, but it's a good stable engine and they run really well. They're very competitive and they they seem to last a long time. Um, when I say a long time, the blocks, <laughs> Chevy blocks will break after a while. These things are bulletproof. They're okay. really strong. Um, we just had a problem with a couple of them and they're fixing that and then they'll be readily available. It happens. Um, the head, it's been bulletproof and you can do any, you can take it to any head porter and have him do his version of it. You know, um, it's a real good head. So we, we've really got a bunch of parts for this engine. That's going to make it easier for the, the guy that wants to go racing and, you know, he can buy all these parts from Ford and he can put them in and they're, and he's going to be relatively competitive. Whereas a Chevy, you, you've literally got to take it to a builder like myself or Kistler or somebody, uh, you know, Speedway or Ryder. Ryder, Ancient Bill, Ryder. Tom Ryder does a good job. And um, fortunately for us, there's a lot of really good builders out there because we couldn't keep up with the pace at all. But, uh, I, I have a funny story about building engines. <laughs> I built 100 new Donovans in 77. I made six thousand dollars on a on a Donovan, and I built probably seventy engines at seventy five thousand dollars. I still make six thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's but, how much yeah. all all the the increases in the parts price yeah. increase. I mean, it's you know everybody's you know complaining about going to the grocery store. Well, we've had the same problem with with engines. Yeah, I mean, it, I, an engines. Mm -hmm. To give you a price, I mean, I used to sell a new engine, an iron engine, for forty five hundred bucks. <laughs> now they're seventy five thousand bucks. So that that's a big evolution right there to me. Um, believe it or not, it doesn't slow them down. They still buy them, and um, you know, they're they're really great engines. And uh, the weight the weight was over five hundred pounds when we started. And now it's 330 pounds, you know, so that it extrapolates into a, a different car because it's so light. So they move the motor. So, back. so the question, question now, how, how closely do you work with the chassis manufacturers? Because I mean, engines being twice as much, uh, uh, having twice as much powers being lighter. I mean, it does have a tremendous effect. We, we with... do work with a couple of manufacturers, but not really. You know, a lot of the manufacturers they don't they don't call us and we don't call them. Uh, Jack Elam from J and J, we work with him because that's Don's guy, and and he does a good job and he can change. He's got the ability to change. He's been around as long as we have, so he's really good. Um, but there's several other manufacturers that we've never uh, even talked to that are doing a great job too. So okay. we've got a we've got a few more questions. So we've got a question from Andy uh, Suman. What failure mode would cause you to replace pistons every build after ten races, for example? Um, really, they 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 pull apart once in a while, and it depends on the manufacturer of pistons how long you run them. So we use CP, and they've done a really good job in Molly. Um, they've done a really good job. Those pistons could probably be used, but they get, you know, we run alcohol, so they wear fast. And we run a skinny ring. You know, when I say skinny, point, a 0.7 or a, a one millimeter ring. 
<laughs> and anyhow, it, it, it wears really fast and it wears the grooves out. So you can't really replace the grooves. Um, it makes a lot of power that way, but it's hard on pistons. So the piston may be perfectly fine, but the ring grooves wore out. And, and again, will that piston go 20, 25 races? It may. It may go that far. Do we want to take the chance of that piston failing at 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 at, at race number twenty two that yeah. might destroy a seventy thousand dollar engine? No, so that yeah. that's one of the reasons the piston why piston failure will destroy the engine. Yeah. So we we watch that closely. Interesting. We've got another question from DN. Will this work on the Ford evolve into a midget version? No. no. <laughs> no, it's, it's too big. You could take the head and put it on. And Tim Engler does this already. Yeah, English doing he that takes already. an FR9 head and puts it on a, a block he's made a billet. And, and they run really good. And you could take that head and as a single and put it on a, a different block as long as the bore centers were 4380. So um, you could probably fit it on there. But... Um, so I guess the answer to it is yes, you could, but you you wouldn't want to convert the regular V8 into a V4. You'd buy a you'd make a block and put the V8 head on it, which is done all the time. Yeah, and, and the other thing too, you got to remember that 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 in this business, everything that we do, the the Ford, the Chevy, it's a specialized engine. It's it the 410. We we specialize in that 410 engine. Mm -hmm. Have we done midgets? Well, yeah, but that we don't like to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the midget engines are tough. Um Speedway does a lot of Toyota engines and and um you know they've actually worked at it a long time to get them to last. Toyota's really worked hard and it's a really good engine, but there's always an independent that wants to whip them and so they're putting Ford engines in there. They're actually doing a good job with it. But uh it's not a good good market for us. So we don't even mess with it. We go watch them. We've got another question from Scott uh, Drummond. Run and Don, what is your opinion of oil additives that reduce friction? And do you see a benefit when they can prove to reduce wear by a large percentage? I'm going to turn uh, that over to Don. Uh, he's, he's, he's with Lake, and Lake is always, you know, yeah, Lake and I have done a tremendous amount of experimentation with oils. We've developed a lot of stuff for when Lake was with Driven Racing Oil. Um, we did, we've got testing data that goes back 15 years for about, about oil. Lake is a, you know, is a licensed tribologist. That's the guy that specializes in oil. And what we normally tell everybody is the oil that you are using in your race car was designed for a specific pur purpose. And when you change that by using additives, you can actually mess the oil up. So we, we instead of using the additive part to, to a, an oil that might not be as good, we always recommend using the, the driven oil, the mobile one stuff is incredible that we use. It's It's been designed and if you actually add zinc or you add some of these other, chemicals you can actually hurt the oil so we we really do not recommend doing that we do recommend mobile one zero fifty is what we run in our engines and it's been tremendous for us and tsr um they've done a lot of and the other oil companies are working too but the mobile one seems to be the most popular of the brand that we've used and the bearings and everything look the best so that's what we recommend we we have never had a problem with that oil. Um, we know how it's how it's formulated based upon some of the the testing we've done, and and it's and it's really good stuff. It's good stuff. And Lake's tested it. Yeah, <laughs> and retested. <laughs> Lake tells us it's okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, same with us here. You know, actually, this is episode four hundred and forty six, I believe, and uh, episode number one was with Lake. So we yeah. launched the webinar series back with Lake. And this is the first time I'm hosting a webinar. Again, my apologies. You have to deal with it. Oh, you're doing job, a great job. Jeff, <laughs> uh, Jeff Hammond uh, has a technical challenge, and we're still trying to get him on. We've got a question from Gary Meehan from Australia. That's a long one. I know, so, Gary. Yes. Okay. 
So let me read it. I might be just a sprinkle engine nerd, but I feel it would be interesting to know more of the evolution and development from that first sprinkle engine for Tommy Hunt in 1976 through today's development with the Ford program. What was the first, the first combination power level? And then more about the first aluminum block that came from GM and that was copied by Ed Donovan. What was the combination and what heads were used? Yeah, that uh, Tom Hunt actually drug, drug me into this. So <laughs> um, he's an old high school friend. He came, get, grabbed me off the beach and says, We got to build racing engines for sprint cars. Yeah. His family was from Hunt's Magnetos, and uh, they did all the Magnetos for our cars. But to answer Gary's question, you know, we started with an iron block in. And when we made the aluminum block, I had a, this is Donnie Ray Everett is an old sprint car guy. He's gone, but he had a block with a patch on it. And I said, where'd you get that block? It was aluminum. And uh, he said, you can have it if you want. And I took it to Ed and I took an iron one to Ed. And then Ed made his version of it. Um, that's how the first block was built. Um in back in those days, we were getting to a power level where we had, we're breaking main webs and we're doing all we could do. And it says, I can fix that with an aluminum block from his drag racing experience, the 417. And he built us the first block. And I mean, the block today is not a lot different than the first block we built. You know, it's, it's smoothed off and we've taken things that we don't use, like the fuel pump boss and the filter boss off it. And, and, um, Tailored it specifically yeah, for the street car. cast right down the street here, and and Kathy Donovan's still building blocks, and um, unfortunately, she's the only one building them, so she can't keep up. But um, you know, they're they're the block itself is really basically same bore centers. Uh, we have a bigger cam, and we've raised it up so we could get it and fit a bigger stroke crank in there, and and a bigger cam and but the block is really the same, but the block, I guess the evolution of the block was from an iron Chevy and an aluminum, an aluminum Chevy. They're both Chevy blocks. And that's how that happened. It didn't happen overnight. It took better than a year to make the block. Um, but okay. what, the well, first time we put it in the car at one, it was, <laughs> it was a good car, a good deal. And Dean Thompson was the driver in those days. And, um, uh, you know, he was a quite a, he actually, he and Bruce Bromley and myself put that block on Broadway because he won, every, I mean, he won like, we raced 40 times, he won 30 races. You know? I mean, it was <laughs> unbelievable. And of course, everybody wanted him and that's how I built the first 100 blocks. So um, I guess that had answered Gary's question. It does. Now, I was under the understanding that rotating weight was a big problem. So how does the rotating weight now compare to other 410s? They're really about the same. The 1560 is uh, the bob weight, we call it. And mm -hmm. the cranks weigh about the same as a Ford. The Ford and the Chevy are very close. Um, the Chrysler had a little heavier crank. But the bob weight is usually about fifteen sixty, which is a light bob weight. It, it's very light, but we've acted, but it's been designed with the parts that are that are capable of, of staying together when 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 the rotating assembly is. That yeah, light. very rarely when one comes apart, it's a, a rare a, it's a rarity. It used to be kind of a common occurrence, but with Carrillo rods and Sunny Bryant cranks and stuff, the, everything's custom made now out of good materials. But the, the weight of the crank has always been about, you know, 15 to 1700. We use a 1560 uh, weight, but uh, other guys might use a little bit heavier. Um, it depends. But uh, the, that's common for Bob, 15 to 1700, depending on what you're doing. Next. We've got a question for Don. Don, in your opinion, how does the torque curve? 
delivery compare against the Chevrolet and Toyota in the RPM range that you hmm. would see coming off the corners on a quarter mile boring on a larger flowing half mile tracks? Well, you know, that that's something that we've been working on during the whole project uh, is making the car drivable. Um, in doing so, we have come up with a number of different combinations. Um, when I say different combinations, cam, injector, uh, injector size, stack length, things like that, um, to tailor the torque curve of the engine so for, 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 for different tracks, we can do that. But at, at first, the, the, the engine was such a beast. I mean, literally, it, it surprised us. The engine was such a beast. We spent a lot of time with the combinations trying to get the torque curve back to what we knew worked with the Chevrolet. And we've yeah. actually got a torque curve, a, a, a combination where you couldn't really tell the difference between the, the Chevy and the Ford, Ford torque curve. Now we've varied the, on the Ford, we've varied it in many different ways to try different stuff. But to answer that question, we can actually make a Ford with the exact same torque curve as the Chevrolet has for those who are used to that engine. Yeah. We've, we've worked on it with the heads and the injector and the cam. We can actually make it run like a Chevy, but you don't really want to make it run like yeah. a Chevy. You want to make it run better. So yeah. we're always working. Uh, we just ran a different combination engine last weekend and it, it actually smoked all the guys. So <laughs> we're kind of looking at what we've done there, but we're still learning. Yeah, yeah we're still we're learning. still in the learning ages uh, of this thing. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to beat a Chevy, but this one beats it. This, this it, one's it amazing. Beats it up. This, this Ford is just amazing. How, um, now, another question for, for, for both of you. Would you one, I'm sorry, would one need to run a different engine with a different cam choice when going from a quarter, third, half mile track if a team was traveling? Yes. Yes, he would. So at traveling guys, we, we, we hit the middle of the road because they run big engines and, and little tracks and, and little engines at big tracks because they can't make, they don't have time to mess with it because they've driven all night and they're tired. And, um, but yeah, so a camshaft, for instance, a camshaft in a sprint car is at 50, it's 262, 266, we'll say. And then we'll go up to 264, 268. And if you, you know, you go to Eldor or, or Knoxville, which we're pretty good at those places, we probably run a, you know, a 268, Two six, you know, three hundred or something like that. A little bit bigger cam. And in in the lift, it's all the same. It's all ground on the same lobe. So, four seventy nine, four seventy one lift uh, at the lobe. Cam lift. And then we we fix that up with rocker ratio. So, for instance, the Ford uses one seven and one eights, and the Chevy's probably will use one seven and one six fives. So they have a little less lift, um, but. Uh, they really run the same. So it really depends on where you're going to run. If you're going to run one track, then we would build it with one certain cam. But the guys in the outlaw circuit in all the circuits that we build for, we can't do that. So we have to hit a happy medium. Um, Got it. Different tracks. Like we'll go to Hopstab. This week we're going to be at a Hopstab, but then we'll go to Eldora. <laughs> I mean, this, it's, there's no comparison. So you got to. So then how. How does the engine respond to tuning changes at those different tracks? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it 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 responds just like a Chevy. So, you know, we we probably look at the weather and see what it's at, where the weather is, you know, if it's we do everything in by thousand feet. So if it's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, depending on the weather condition, we have a sheet. That, that would start them out at a thousand and what they would be at a, a two thousand and three thousand and four thousand. So it's all that comes with the engine. So they they know where to get close. And then if you get a guy like me out there that's going to tickle it, you know, to get a little more. <laughs> but you don't want to do you that. Blow to, up. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to get a customer, you know, that's going to blow up his engine. So we we do it with a sheet and we make them go by the sheet. 
and then we do the experiment and when I get there. Yeah. And, and again, you know, part of the reason for this is the mechanical fuel injection is very stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like a carburetor where a carburetor will change with atmospheric conditions. It will, it will kind of change itself. The, our system, the constant flow fuel injection system does not do that. So you have to tell the fuel system yeah. what to do. So it's very important for guys like Ron at the racetrack to know what the weather conditions is, because that changes what we're going to do yeah. to how much fuel the engine's going to have. So with that said, you know, we've got all this stuff in the trailer, you know, that tells us the weather. So, you know, we, we have one portable thing that you know, most of the crew chiefs carry around, you know, and keep it on. And then they'll call me. It will make a change, um, but they also have the sheet to go by. But the, the teams that I work with, they'll call me, and we'll make a change. Yes. I think they do that so they can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're, we're, uh, time is running, and we still have a, a, a few questions from our guests. So we've got uh, from our listeners. So again, again, John Bigford, Ron, do you offer a dirt late model motor? You know, we used to build them for Billy Moyer, and um, we would offer one, but we 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 never get very a lot of requests. So I would say probably we could build one, but no, we're not making a, 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 a an engine for. The, we send them to Andy Durham or somebody, or you know, there's a couple the of guys that builders. specialize in them. In them yeah. yeah, again, and we... we share information with those guys, yeah. so. Um, next question from Charlie Sykes. Will there be a spec sheet as to main bore, deck height, bore center, lifter bore sizes, etc.? Yes. Yes, there yes. will be. That's the that's the the cheat sheet that I was talking about that the Ford engineers are working on right now. That it, it's there's gonna be a cookbook with all that information. In it. Yeah, so they won't have to guess, they can just open the book. Yeah. And that will be available to those who want it. Yes. I mean, every every last nut and bolt is going to be on there, yeah. so it, it should be a good thing when they get it done. Excellent. But uh, time is uh, we're getting close to the end, so we uh, we got a few more generic questions, which uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy reading. Um, Ron and Don, thinking back, uh, what are your favorite memories or achievement within the racing industry? Ron's got a lot of those. <laughs> I think. The you know, winning the, the uh, Knoxville Nationals has always been a big thing, and and we won ton twelve of them, and um, with both Ford and Chevrolet, both, by the way. both Ford and Chevrolet, and you know the only guy that's actually probably he's probably one ahead of me is Carl Kinzer, and Donnie's won eleven, so yeah. um, it's kind of where we're, we're getting into an area where. It's pretty good, but it, there's something about the Nationals when you go there. It's the it's it's the just, Daytona 500 yeah, for, it's, for, it's, for it's, the, it's the it really biggest is. it's the biggest race of the and year the for the people. Sprint they they come out in droves and yeah, um, and we've yeah, been fortunate I would say enough Knoxville. to we've and, been fortunate enough to yeah. win a lot of them. You know, you know, Eldora is big too, but it doesn't have the same feel when you're there. Kings Royal, all the big races. Kings Royal, yeah, yeah. we've won all the big races, but. Knoxville's the best one. Yeah. A question from Scott Gills. Uh, Ron, sorry, not an engine question, but in your opinion, does any sprint car body style offer and aero advantages? You know, that's a that's a good question for Ricky Warner, but yeah. Um the yeah, I, I think there's some there, but not much. You know, they, they change the hoods all the time. But then they bolt a wing on there that that puts three or four hundred pounds of downforce on them in the wind tunnel. So I think the best thing for aero is the wing. I mean, without that wing, yeah. I mean, you can go see a wing, a non-wing car run. They're they're two or three seconds slower, and they have the same stuff on them. But the wing is probably the biggest thing to make them go fast. It keeps them glued to the ground. Um, the driver has to have a lot of trust in that. Yeah, you know, to be able to enter a corner at full song and not lift. I'd That's say the hard. biggest biggest thing to the body is they change from fiberglass to carbon fiber, you know, for the weight. But the they really there's really been no changes. I mean, you could go back and look at the cars and 
there's very little difference in the in the arrow part. Um, but the wing has been a big advantage. And one last question from Jim uh, Lepetich. I have read that sometimes a team will detune the engine to reduce the horsepower because of the track condition. What changes are they making to the engines? It's that's that gets a long. We we could have a whole series on yeah, that right we, there. We <laughs> you could. There's several ways. So you have timing. So we have a box that takes the timing out while you're running. Then we have a crank trigger. So we have two ways to, to detune the ignition to retard the thing. And then we, we do it with stacks. We use an air cleaner that's stopped up. Um, so it can't get it much air in it. Mufflers. Um, and then we use mufflers Change to kill the, the headers, power. Headers. And uh, tri-wise, we put tri-wise on, it'll kill the power. So a fully detuned engine would be, we'll say, 940. We could probably tune it down to darn near 800. And believe it or not, like, like last weekend, you know, we were probably running an engine with only 850 horse. And, you know, but so what we do is we go there with all the power. We qualify the car on all the power because you need power. The track's wet and it's better. And uh, then from then on, the whole night, we spend detuning. And we might do, depending on the track, where we would be. For instance, one track might require just timing. So we take a, from 26, it'll back up one degree per 3,000 at 3,000 RPM. It'll back up one, two, three, four. And then if that's not enough, we got to switch. The, the trigger's already back at, we'll say, 23 or 22. And that'll knock the power out. And then, or we might go to another track where we don't really want, we want the thing to have sting when you hit the throttle. So we leave the timing in and we put an air cleaner on it. That's, it looks like an air cleaner, but it's, it's a big piece of sponge that it can't suck any air. So it slows the air down a bit. And, or we'll go to another track where we think we need all the motor. So we kill it with mufflers or headers. Um, it's, it's a constant, constant change but there's about five major things that you do to kill the power and you'll kill it down as much as a 20. If, I mean, that's quite a bit from nine twenty when you're starting, you know, so you run out around there at nine twenty, and then you go to a 20 and then when you're racing it, you, and you can't even tell, I mean, but it quits the tires from spinning. So, and the driver's got to be the biggest, your biggest tell that you say, I can't get it hold the grip just blows the tires off. What do I do? And then we go to work. When, you know, when, when you see a car, like, like Ron talked, mentioned Saturday, when you see a car that looks like it's just rocketing down the, the straightaway that has a ton of power. Well, yeah, that thing has a ton of power, but it's doing that because it's hooked up and we've taken, because we've taken power out of it. Yeah. And it just look, it looks fast because it is yeah. fast, but to do that, we've actually had to soften the motor. The motors are better yeah. than the cars. <laughs> Done. Have we have we covered uh, pretty much every topic you wanted to address today, or is there any other? Well, I I, like I think so. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The, the questions have been great, and you know, it's it's been a blast doing this, and uh, I hope yeah. we've we've been able to to share some of the some of the knowledge that we've had, you know, over the years. Like I said, I've I've been lucky enough to to work with this legend here for the last twenty five years, and I've learned. An incredible amount of stuff, you know, coming from the NASCAR side and and um, the the team of guys we we work here with. We we don't come to work. We 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 come to have fun, and that's one of the reasons why. Like Keith, for example, he was Jeff Gordon's uh, engine builder for a long time. Um, he he's retired. We it, I, I, my birthday's tomorrow. I'll be sixty three. I'm the youngest guy here, so we're all getting kind of old. But we do it because we're just we're still good at it, we're, and we're we're still having fun doing it. Yeah. Well, ha happy birthday! I know every time I speak to you, Don, that's what you're saying. You're having fun, and I'm so sorry Jeff didn't make it on today. I talked to him in Texas at the NASCAR race last weekend, and he was excited to be on here. So we'll find out what happens well, technically, but. Well, uh, We'll we'll have you back and we'll have Jeff uh, uh, and then we'll we'll set up uh, something at one point to, to make sure. Uh, great, yeah, know. that'd be fun. It, it's always fun talking to you. You guys. did a great job. Yeah, and 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 you should, and next time don't be so nervous, Francis. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, we produced I'm those. Thrilled we had a lot of good people. questions from people. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. So thank Absolutely. you both. Th thank okay, you very thank much. You. So my uh, pleasure. This. This webinar has been recorded. It will be posted later on the Portrait platform, distributed through our YouTube channel or a newsletter, etc. We will be back next week. Uh, we'll be talking suspension with L-Week suspension products. Again, thank you very much for being with us today. And for more information, visit www.ePortrait.com. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. ePartrade is a digital platform that we've created basically to make life easier in the business community of auto racing. ePartrade, there is no e-commerce. It's literally a connection just like at a trade show. So now, any time of the year, a buyer could reach out to a supplier. When you see a product that you're interested in, all you need to do is click on the request more information. And then from there, it is forwarded directly to the buyer or to the supplier. ePartrade really eliminates having to travel, closing down your shop. Now you have a place to showcase globally your racing product and technology. Land speed record holder George Poteet's speed demon rocketed 481 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats. You don't go that fast without ARP fasteners. There is no way that we could go the speed that we've gone, the number of times we've gone, with a lesser quality bolt than ARP supplies to us. And we absolutely wouldn't be where we were today if it weren't for ARP. When failure is not an option, it's ARP-Bolts.com. We're Performance Plus Global Logistics. Our team of dedicated performance industry and logistics experts get valuable cars and components to the track on time in top condition. We provide expedited logistics solutions for the performance industry using direct routes instead of deferred options and communicate all necessary information to the appropriate resources to meet regulations and ensure a smooth transit and secure delivery, both domestically and internationally. And we exceed customer expectations by providing best-in-class service with an efficient and cost-effective system in place. Contact us today to book your next shipment. You work as hard as your truck and you have no time for downtime. That's why more truck owners trust Blue Def, America's number one diesel exhaust fluid brand. Each batch is guaranteed pure, so you can avoid costly repairs caused by inferior DEF. Demand America's best for your truck. Blue Def and Blue Def Platinum. Put trust in your truck. Where will you find Ferreira Racing Components? Circle Track, Drag Racing, and any top race shop. In every form of motorsports competition, our valves and valve train components deliver race-proven design and technology. And we've brought that same performance to our street applications as well. We're backed by five decades of experience, an extensive range of off-the-shelf components, and our custom valve department has the fastest turnaround times in the industry. Ferreira Racing Components. Stand with us or race against us. Scrivener Plastics has provided professional strength shipping containers to the automotive and performance industry for over 40 years. We have containers that will fit most any configuration of complete or partial engines and transmissions. Today we highlight part number 5148 cylinder head shipping and storage container. Base has double wall durable construction featuring a cinch strap with an abrasion sleeve that securely fits your small block, big block, and pro stock heads to the base at all times. Talk to your dealers and distributors about the shipping storage container for cylinder heads from Scrivener Plastics part number 5148.